had a great train ride at the Berkshire Scenic Railway. And now I'd like to draw a picture of the diesel locomotive. <clears throat> the way I've started is in order to make this great big machine in perspective, I've um, made a vanishing point on my picture. And what I've done is I've taken a pencil and made two lines that connect to this little dot that's right here. And the, uh, every line on the train that is horizontal, if you took an invisible line, will attach to that dot. Because as you know, as, as, it go, look, as you look at it through space, it's going to look smaller as it goes further away. So I'm going to start with the front of the train. And this is 9935. That's the name of this train. And I'm going to start with a, a rectangle. Only I'll be curving the top of it because this has a rounded shape. And there's a little metal box right there that I'll put in. And then I'm going to put the headlights in first because I want to um, <clears throat> get my bearings. <laughs> I'll use those to kind of think about where all the other pieces are going to attach. This is a huge piece of heavy piece of machinery. On the front of the train, there's a snow plow because we're here in the Berkshire Hills. We're in Lenox now, and this train goes to Lenox, Lee, and Stockbridge. It's a very pretty natural route that it goes, and there are also commercial trains that go on this route as well. But the trains here for the passengers have all been restored, so they, they are um, just a, a reminder of the olden days in a way. And this is the coupler that I'm drawing in now, which is how it will attach. And the thing that's amazing is this train can go, the engine can go either way. It can go in this direction or it can turn around and hitch, a, hitch the passenger coaches here and go in that direction. So now you'll see the uh, perspective as I draw the body of the train where it attaches to the cab. And then we've got some little steps going up here. And then there's some railings because when the people are going up and down, they want to be able to hold on. This, of course, would be the engineer that's going up to this part of the train. No passengers allowed. And then some more lights because this train, when it goes through the crossings, will start flashing those lights and sounding its um, whistle. Whistle is, comes out from right here. I can't, you can't really see it from this perspective. But I think everyone knows when they hear that sound, the train is coming. And when it approaches the crossing, it does two long, one short, and another long one. And this little diamond is where the, it says the Berkshire Hills Route is what it says there. So I'll just put that in with, with a little bit of sketchy kind of lettering. Now we've got two smokestacks on the top. Of the, of the locomotive, and uh, let's see, work on the cab now. Has a curved roof, and this line, of course, is, is attaching an invisible line to this little vanishing point that I have made for myself. And this is another square shape with that rounded roof. And this is the door that the engineer would go through to get to the cab. And he may lean out that door to look to see what's coming ahead. And he's got two windows up here to look through. And hopefully when I color the train in, you'll be able to get a little bit more of a sense of that it's three-dimensional when I put the shadows in. And he's got windows here to look out. And I think typically you think of the engineer looking out these windows and looking at the track ahead and he's got his cap on. I was amazed to find out that 
In order to be an engineer of a train, you have to memorize every crossing on your route, and there may be hundreds of crossings. So they will call out where the, um, what the next crossing will be. It's a very important job, and safety is the big consideration. Now this little line here just shows where the paint has been um, changing color. And let's see, we have a f some other lights here. Four lights in front. And you'll see the same configuration in the back of the train too. Or you could say that's the front and this is the back. Now the, the train rests on two huge pieces of machinery called the trucks. And it almost looks like an S shape that comes down. And this is what, how the wheels are held on. And you can just see the wheels just behind the truck. And it's a very complicated piece of machinery. For example, there's uh, how many? Four huge springs that are right here. And he's, there's one truck in the front here, and then one under the cab. And of course, those big wheels will sit on the track. So I'll draw the track in, and I'll be using that vanishing point, again, thinking about how it goes way back in the distance. So you have the iron rail that sticks up, and it's flat on the top, and then you'll have your ties that will be underneath where you really wouldn't see them. And then there's gravel in between. So it's starting to look a little bit like a train. Another piece of machinery here. This is a reservoir for, I think it's for the brakes. The brakes are actually this part right here. It's starting to look like a train, I hope. <laughs> and then, you'll have a little bit of a, one of the coaches in the back. We'll just see a glimpse of. And this, of course, is a passenger train, but if you have a train set, you know that you could have, um, for a freight train, there's a coal car. You could put any number of things. Natural gas could be in the, one of the freight cars. But this one is a passenger train. And that's probably where we are sitting right there. That was a lot of fun. We saw a lot of wildlife along this route. Very pretty place. And I'm almost, let's see, the, I'm almost done with the line, par, line part of the drawing. This is where the green comes. This is a very attractive train in the color wise. That's going to be green. And then we have right here some metal louvers, and that is there for cooling the engine. Because these engines do a lot of work pulling this heavy train. There, I think I'm just about ready to do the, to color it in. So I'll get my watercolors. <laughs> these are the very same watercolors that I use every day. They look very familiar. And I'm making a little bit of black with my blue and brown. And then we have this beautiful, uh, it's almost like color of mustard that you put on your hot dogs. And I'll put that in first. Now the light is striking really the front of the train more. Our light source is here, so this means that this yellow here I'll put in first and that will be a lighter color. Oops, that was supposed to be green. Well, an artist always needs to be able to be flexible. I'll just go right over with that, with that green, it won't matter. So this is a little bit paler because this is where the light's hitting it. And hopefully we'll be able to see how uh, this gives it a three-dimensional effect when I show the shadows. So there's the lighter yellow of that mustard color. And then it'll go a little darker going, oops, down the engine. <laughs> 
I've never done a book about a train before because I am a little bit better at drawing animals and people than I am at mechanical things. But I have had such a good time on this train and the big train trip we took in Africa was really extraordinary and very memorable. I'll never forget that. Let's see, there's a little bit more, another diamond down here with, an, with the insignia of, the, of this route, the Berkshire, Berkshire Hills route. And now we've got that beautiful dark green color. It's almost, you could almost call that British racing green if it was a car. This is dark, dark green. So I've got my green and I'm putting a little bit of blue in it and a tiny bit of brown. And I think that I'm going to make the, uh, where the light hits the front, a lighter green. And I'm going right over that yellow, which was a little bit of a mis mistake on my part. <laughs> but boy, when you're an artist, you have to be, you have to be able to, uh, deal with mistakes because they happen and sometimes it turns out that a mistake is the best thing that ever happened. Now let's see, the, this part is black. This is such a dark green. So I'm just going to cut, and the stairs are black. So I'm just going to color in this little part right here and then this will be a darker green coming down. Even on a beautiful day like this, it's hard to tell whether that is dark green or black. There we go. The, I'm going to leave a little white there because I want to show it has a little bit of a shine to it. The paint is reflective. And now I've got my water. I'm going to take the water out of my brush and just run my brush over that part and hopefully that will make it give it a rounded look. There we go. It usually takes me an hour to do an inch when I'm in my studio, so it's a little different kind of drawing here. And here's more of the that dark green color. Makes me wish I was on a train ride. Of course, I think the most fun ever is sleeping overnight in a train and going to sleep with that rumble of the wheels over the rails and looking out the window and seeing the countryside go by. And waking up and see, seeing you in a totally different place. Very exciting. And it's also fun to have something to eat in the dining car. <laughs> as the scenery goes by. I'm mixing up a little bit more green so I can do the cab. And I can see that the window has a little bit of a white edge around the window. Oh, now this would have to be a little, this is facing that light source, so this is going to be a little bit of a lighter green. I want to make, that, make sure that this looks three-dimensional and not flat. And then right here will be darker green again. I think the whole train trip that we took was about maybe an hour going through the little towns here in the Berkshires. And it follows the Housatonic River, which is a mighty river, empties out into the Atlantic Ocean. And so we were able to see all the wildlife along the Housatonic. Because it doesn't follow the same routes as, as, the car, as cars do. It goes off into the countryside. Now this train, uh, the coach here, is a little bit of an olive green color. And I would say olive green is green with a, quite a bit of black in it. 
But I notice that the men that are here have been working very hard on restoring one of the other engines and they're painting it. I can't wait to see how that looks. Maybe you'll have to come back and paint the new restored engine. And there is a caboose down there too. It's a red one. Now I'm using a gray color <clears throat> because even though this is, is very black under the undercarriage here, it's, I want to be able to show that it has shape and form. So there's that reservoir, which I've outlined, and now I'm coming back with just water, hopefully making it look round. Yeah, it looks a little bit round. If I want to make that really look like it's curved, I've just got water on my brush there and taken away a paint in the center, so it has that curved shape. And then here's the truck. It looks almost like an S, and then a backwards S that meet in the middle. There's the four giant springs, and then just be, you're just able to see the wheels in the back. And I noticed as I was walking down the train, the cars, this truck is a little bit of a different configuration on the different cars. Probably made at different places in different times. And somebody who knew about railroads could probably tell, look at that and be able to say exactly where that came from. And I'm going to draw on those stairs coming down. And let's see, I put a little bit of a blue tint in these headlights so it looks like they're I'll put some yellow in there too. Oh, those are red here. And show a little bit of perspective there because I'm going to come back. And on the side closest to me, we'll make that dark and we'll see if that makes it look a little bit like it's the perspective of it. And here's the coupler where it attaches. And there's so much complicated machinery here that I'm just using a gray wash to cover it up so I don't have to draw it. Now somebody who's interested in mechanical things, they'll be the ones to go back in and do all that nice detail because they'll know what everything is for. <laughs> and now it's the beautiful plow that is going to take the snow away when it's moving down the tracks. Because with this part of New England where we live, we've had some big snowstorms with this, you know, six feet of snow that will fall. And the, this plow has kind of a curved shape. So I'm, I'm darkening the ends and then using a little bit more of a watery gray for the inside of the plow so that it looks like it's curved. There's the coupler, which I'm just going over again with my brush. And this is all dark underneath because there's more machinery. That's the brake stops the train. It takes a long time to stop a train so that safety is first. If you see train tracks, it's not a good idea to get close to them. And usually they are blocked off because the train takes a long time to stop because it's just so heavy. And I'm just using my uh, blue color to underneath the train so it looks like it has a shadow because I want it to look like it's firmly attached to the ground <laughs> which it definitely is. Ooh, and this will be fun to do these the stacks. What I'm doing is I'm just using my dark gray to go down on either side taking all the paint off my brush wiping it on my paper towel and then just using a watery, just water, and that will give it a, a round shape. And if it doesn't do the trick, I'll just go back in with just plain water. And there's a little stripe. And now I've got that blue color. I think I'll do these windows. Now, and there's probably an engineer up here. And here's the man looking down the tracks. I mean, these, the engineers, all they talk about is safety. They just want to make sure everything goes well for the, everybody on the train, but people, um, 
in the outside world too. So here's his face. He's got his cap on and his Berkshire Scenic Railroad cap and uniform. And there was something I was all looking forward to. I know we've got to do the little insignia. Put this little diamond shape, which says the Berkshire Hills Route, which is very, th this would, if you love historic trains, each route has its own special picture that they put on the train. This is green and, and uh, that mustard color, but they're very colorful. And the track is this rusty, rusty red color, rusty reddy brown. So I'm going to do that. Just see a little bit under there, and then it gets too far away to really see it. And then the uh, the uh, railroad ties are all weathered. So uh, some are sort of a brown, brownish gray color. That's way too dark. There, that's more like it. And then we have the bed of the tr the tracks, which is just large gravel. Now let's see, what does this need? I think we need, a, I need to put a little bit of, make this look curved here. And I'm not putting anything on actually. I'm taking away. <laughs> Almost done. I'm saving those little red lights to last. Let's see, what, have, what does it need? Okay, now this train says Housatonic on the side, which is the river that it goes alongside. But next year they will have their new engine that will be all painted up for the Berkshire Scenic Railroad. So it says Housatonic. Almost done. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot something very important. Here's the number of the train. And I've heard the men, the engineers and the people that are working to restore the trains, they'll, they'll call the trains by their number. So this will be the 99 three, five, and then as I promised myself, here goes those lights. Getting the water off my brush, that's what I'm doing there. So we've got the little, they're almost a ruby red. I'm going to get that color right. And there she is. Now an artist always needs to sign their work, so I'm going to bend down and find my marker. I hope you'll have just as much range.